That's who you are. That's what you do. One thing that I found out, and it, it, it mystifies me, what retailers do not do enough of, take your best customer aside in your own language and say to them, Mrs. Mr. Brown, you come in here every month or every three months and you buy from us. Do you, you are incredibly valuable to my business and thank you so much. Just to your best customers. Just saying that to customers is so critically important. They'll walk through fire for you. Why? Because not one in a thousand do it. So the objective, to make your customer the best customer experience in Canada. The best customer experience in Canada. And can you do it? Yes, you can do it. There are tons of retailers out there who do this. People, you know, they rave about it. You've got to go to this person's place. You've got to go there. These guys are so great. And I teach this stuff. I mean, you, you can't teach customer service, by the way. You, you, you hire attitude and you teach skill. And that's how you do it. You're professional people here. And how you interact and engage with people is critically important. And how you talk to people. Yesterday, we were at a restaurant. I've been out here a couple of days with my wife. And um, I was at a restaurant. The waitress came over, just served us like any other restaurant. She could have come over and said, hey, you know, I haven't seen you here before. You knew? Yes, well, welcome to our restaurant. It's called the Hilton Experience. I did a, a, a secret shopper thing in, in Vancouver not too long ago. Four or five stores. They asked me to go in and tell us what, how you're going. I went in looking like a dumb person, looking around like this. And I said to three different people in the store, each store, I'm new in the store. Not one said, welcome. Never seen you here before. You know, welcome to our store. Hope you'll come back again. Stu Leonard, who I'll refer to a little later, says, all we want are people to come in, feel good, and bring a friend. Here's mine. Treat others as you'd want to be treated, and you go down. But the, the most important one for me is the third one up from the bottom. Be accountable and take responsibility. Now, I've hot-fired web designers because they didn't get number three right. And you can hire and fire on this, and I'm not saying you should, but I'm saying if you put your core values together and you get your employees to actually be the ones to contribute to what those core values look like, they've bought the show. And this is critically important for the millennial because our kids and our kids' kids have never been taught a work ethic. And I don't know if maybe it's different with you. I know I have a daughter who, yes, she has a great work ethic. I'm talking on the general basis. So it's creating that work ethic. That, so when I go into a company or a store like yours, I spend one hour and they, and I put up prompters on what their core values on the wall and I say, okay, in the next hour I want you to kind of collect as groups, put your core values together based on what you see there or others, and then the next two hours I land base them on those. I talk to them on the attitude of this. Core values because that's the foundation of your business and you can literally run your business just strictly on this. When a new hire comes in, particularly uh, part-time people, you hand them the sheet and you say, here's our 10 core values. Do you think you can understand this? And do you think that's, you know, you can live with this? Yes. They bought into it now. They say, we hire people with attitude who will, who want to serve and want to give and want to make the person feel great. And that's what you look for in business. And that's the future. We're not in the building supply business serving people. We're in the people business serving building supplies. You're in the people business. And that's where people get it wrong. They say, well, we're here to sell. No. How can I make your life easier? How can I, you know, work with you on this? What can I do? What can I do for you? Even if they're coming in and they're not really looking for building supplies. Everything counts in retail. Everything. Every person who walks in the door counts. You might think, well, this person comes in all the time, never buys anything. Don't dismiss people. Now, ultimately, you give the better perks to the with the 20% who do the bulk of your business, but that is a critical part. Levels of connection to self. When I talk to people, I say, look, if you don't love what you do, what the heck are you doing? Get out of there. I was doing a workshop in Northern Ontario. I did, this slide had come up in the, before the break. Lady comes up to me, she says, I spent the last 13 years in retail, and I'm looking at you and talk, listening to you, and I come to the determination, I actually hate people. She's in retail. 
How many people have gone into retail stores and they, you, you know they don't even like you? Right? He goes, what the hell are these people doing here? Okay, so I say to people, if you don't like what you do, get out of there. You're giving a bad name to the industry. So, 80% of consumers go to big box outlets and they treat it like a religion. How many people here have clients who will travel 20 miles for a quarter? Yes, you all have them. They're not your customers. These 80%, they will swear and die by big box. They treat shopping as a blood sport. And you know who they are. Okay, so when they come in, don't mistreat them, but you understand who the, that 80% falls into the category of the people who really shop that world all the time. And you're looking for the 20% who are loyal to independent retailers, who would rather shop locally, who will never darken the door of a big box if they don't have to, who are waiting for you to connect to them on a very personal level, who are waiting for you to say, come and do business with me, and waiting for you to say, thank you for doing business with me. Okay, and they'll pay a fair price for knowledge and service and connection and all those good things that you provide which are not part of just selling product. And customers don't buy products and services alone, they buy relationships and emotion and they intuitively expect it. They intuitively expect that connection. They don't necessarily go looking for it, but if you provide it to them, that's what they look for. They don't buy products and services alone. What's a customer worth to you? What's that 20% who do the bulk of your business worth to you? Have you ever figured it out? Have you ever put it in the back room? Our customer is worth $8,000 a year or $800 a year or whatever it is for you. Remember that. And every employee should see what the average customer is worth to you so they don't tick them off. Or if they do and it happens, then you get a chance to recuperate them again. What kind of emotion do you put into it? Hi, good morning, welcome. Welcome to our, haven't seen you here before. Welcome to our store. You know, c come on in and bring your friends. Here's what this lady says. I've learned that people who will forget what you said and forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. That is everything. That is everything. How do you make people feel when they come into your business? Thank you so much for your time.